thanks, Matt. This is the third time Morgantown University have squared off this year. In the first two battles, it was all university. The Hawks won each game by double digits, but tonight, with the section title on the line, all bets were off. There it is, the new Waco Center, the $30 million state-of-the-art facility that will soon house Glenville State Basketball. Welcome inside the Jesse R. Lilly Gymnasium. I'm Andrew Clay, live here at Glenville State, where the Pioneers hosted their final regular season home game right here in the Lilly. I'm joined now by Athletic Director Janet Bailey. Coach, this has been here since 1951. Uh, there's a lot of great history here. This is a special web exclusive. We're talking recruiting class of 2014. Coach, what's your first uh, impression of your team? We are live from the Lilly Gymnasium right here at Glenville State College. It's the first round of the NCAA Division II Women's Basketball Tournament. Now bumps and turns and other skiers can present problems for people who can see. And if you can't, it requires guides to get you down the mountain. Here we turn wild. right, keep going a little further. Both teams come in tonight ranked inside the top five in Class AAA, and whoever wins tonight will have a lot of momentum and some bragging rights heading into the rest of the season. Now, like I said, you had a JV game going on behind me. Coming up later tonight at 7.30 will be the varsity game. That tips off, like I said, at 7.30 right here at Morgantown High. I'll have a full report tonight at 11. He knows all their names. Neil Walker, Andrew McCutcheon, Brian Morris, Jason Grilly. He's got signed baseballs, an autographed bat. He even has Neil Walker's wristband. But Gage Beavers has one thing probably no one else has, a signed leg. He was born with, he had a leg, he was missing the tibia in his lower leg, part of his kneecap and part of his ankle. He had a leg and a foot, but that had to be amputated at 11 months old. A leg amputation was just the first hurdle in life for young Gage. At three, he came down with a nearly fatal case of meningitis that hospitalized him for more than 40 days. If you think either of these slowed him down, you don't know Gage. His leg, you know, it keeps him from running as fast as some of the other kids, or, but he doesn't let it hold him back. He's not afraid on the baseball field. He's always excited to play. Gage has played baseball for four years now. It's hard sometimes to be you know, on those bleachers watching him, you know, my heart beats fast. I want him so bad just to get a hit, just to get on base. He hits the field every chance he gets, obsessed with his favorite sport. He will stand out in the yard with his bats, with the bat weight on him, and he will swing the bat, and then he'll take the bat weight off, and then he'll swing it some more. And then I saw him the other night, I'm standing on the porch, and I'm looking over, and he's going... <laughs> Not having any idea that anybody's watching him. In May, he had the chance of a lifetime when Pirate second baseman Neil Walker invited him to practice, where he was featured on the Root Sports show Inside Pirates Baseball. There, he got to meet all of his favorite stars. You, you want me to sign your leg? Which color? Which color? I was talking to AJ Burnett, and I met him at Pirates Fest, but then I asked him to sign my leg again, and, he's, and he was like, I already signed that one. And then I was like, no, I got a new one. Then he grabbed his head and fell on the ground. Gage's love for baseball and story has inspired many, and his passion has his parents thinking big. After all, in 1993, a New York Yankee, born with one hand, threw a no-hitter. I, I, <laughs> I feel deep, deep down inside of me, he's going to be the next Jim Abbott. He's going he's gonna to go far. He loves it that much. So this one is signed by Jed Jerko, which doesn't play for the Pirates. And this one is signed by Pedro Alvarez. Inspiration to me, to my wife, uh, to a lot of people. Um, he's changed my life uh, for the better. For 12 Sports, I'm Andrew Clay. <laughs> It's everything, you know. It's uh, it's it's my life. It's my passion, and 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 um, you know, this can definitely drag on you a little bit. But um, you know, we, we've had a lot of fun, and, and you know, there's not too many people who can say they do what they love to do. But this is all I've ever done my entire life. Is, is you know, my paycheck's been coming from driving a race car. 
Shinston is nearly 300 miles from Charlotte, North Carolina, the home of American auto racing, but it's raised one of the country's budding stars. I started when I was 16, almost 16, so this is my this is my 10th year. You know, it's it's, it's kind of crazy to see what we've accomplished in, in such a short amount of time. Josh Richards has spent nearly his entire career in one of the country's premier dirt track circuits, the World of Outlaws Late Model Series. The prodigy child of his father's team, Mark Richards Racing and company Rocket Chassis, Josh took a leap of fate last year, running 13 times in NASCAR's nationwide series. You know, to get that experience last year, I feel like has helped me grow in, in many different ways um, as a person, as a driver. This year, Richards is back in late models, where he's tallied more than 80 career wins, including two championships and more than 40 World of Outlaw victories. You know, we've had a lot of success and a lot of fun, and, and it is definitely challenging. You know, anytime you, you do something like this, um, you put your, you know, all of your effort and your and um, all of your time and that success has helped him become a fan favorite. I just seen him race since he was a little kid to an adult, you know, and he's really progressed a, a lot, you know. And we're all proud of him. Richards is as good as ever in 2013, currently sitting atop of the outlaw standings, and he's loving every lap of it. The only thing that matters is every time you get, you know, strap yourself behind the wheels is just to do your best. I mean, we have the, the goal in our in our minds uh, to win a championship, but the biggest thing is just go out there and have fun and, and uh, do what you love to do and, and try to do your best. For 12 Sports, I'm Andrew Clay. The girls' state basketball tournament continued today. The Morgantown Mohegans went through a lot just to get to Charleston, including beating number three, University. Could the Mohegans knock down a number, another number three tonight? Matt Hosworth has our coverage. Well, how about some boys' regional finals action? Fairmont Senior hosting Jacob Martin and the Ravenswood Devils. This was a thriller. Let's skip straight to the second half. Devils down by nine. Martin gets physical and gets the bucket to cut the lead to seven late in the third. Now a two-point game. Martin again is going to chuck it home. We're tied at 27. Devils eventually take a one-point lead, but not for long. Darius Nunn with the transition bucket. It's 33-32. Polar Bears next possession. Martin. No on the first, yes on the second. Devils back on top in the fourth. Three minutes left, a two-point lead for Ravenswood, but Jacob Casalanova deep put the Polar Bears up by one. Under 10 seconds left, Heath Burgess drives in and lays it home. Ravenswood would be up by one. One final chance for the Polar Bears. Tavon Horton with the Hail Mary. Onions! The Polar Bears are going to states with a 40-38 victory. Here's Horton after the buzzer beater. I really had no clue what was going in. I didn't know, but I think my team had confidence in me, so I just took the shot. Doraz had the ball yelling his name. He, lo he looked at me, and he stood to me. I'm, I guess I made it. I made it. Well, Frankfurt on the road at Bird Falcons, hoping they could catch the Eagles with their guard down. They didn't. Luke Dyer here in the first quarter sets up in the corner. You can't let him that open, guys. Eagles by four. Watch this pass here by Tay Tay Birch. Just lackadaisically hits Alex Banco. Eagles up by seven. Bird's defense was suffocating. Kevin Steele with the steal, and he will get the bucket. Birch had an incredible second quarter. He's just going to keep it himself and get the bucket. The lead is up to 16 for the homeboys. Then Julian Malfergo is going to hit Birch in the corner. That's a three once again. Bird. Man, they got going, and once they started scoring, they weren't going to be stopped. This is Dyer with the steal and the little 360 layup. Eagles blow out Frankfurt tonight, 88 to 56. The winning didn't end there tonight. Bridgeport on the road beat Kaiser 58 to 55. The Indians are off to Charleston, and so are the Bees. East Fairmont stuns Roan County tonight, 70 to 68. East side will go to the state tournament with a losing record and will draw Bird in the first round. So that will certainly be a tough matchup. In the Big 12 tournament, second half action, it's WVU down 28 to, I think, 56 now uh, with about six minutes left in the game. Jason's looking at the TV right now. He's 60, gonna, 60 to 36 now, and that's just uh, not very good.